Welcome to another episode on our channel. My husband is here to help explain a little bit about the resin process so you can make really neat things like uh, lions for Detroit Lions fans. Or actually it's this way. Weapons. I see why you have trouble doing this left to right, left to right stuff. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> He's wearing a Kansas City. Anyway, okay. I do anyway. root for them. Okay. Well, I have rooted for them, you know, since they... Until the Lions didn't until suck anymore. the Lions started winning. So now now we have the same ranking or standings. Standing, yep. yeah. Eight, eight and three. So yep. anyway... Um, Why am I here, dear? So tell them what they need to know to get started. Oh, to get started. Okay. Uh, the first thing I would consider is identify what it is that you want to print. Okay, once you've done that, look in uh, on the internet for, for models of whatever it is that you think you want to print. If you can't find the models and you don't have modeling skills, which vast majority of people do not, uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to spend a few hundred bucks on, on printers and, and accessories. Um, and some printers can print larger items. Yeah, very much and, so. And some are a little more, yeah. you know. Um, uh, if you don't need a large format printer, uh, I looked just before we started filming. A lot of Christmas sales going on right now. Black Friday is extended. Well, you know how it is. They'll keep stuff on sale until it's gone. But you can get a decent printer uh, for $230, 240 somewhere in there. So for uh, the 3D small printer, format, you're not going to do this. So that um, would be 230 to 240 dollars. Yeah. What would be the name of the printer or printers? The two that we've had experience with is uh, a company called Eligu. Eligu, I believe is the printer. And he'll put it in. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the and our two most recent large format printers uh, are from a company called Anycubic. I don't we'll know where they get these names, but in the description as well. I've been just really, really happy with both printers. Um, but again, somebody's going to get an Elegoo printer or or any cubic printer, and they're just going to think it's garbage. Uh, so a anything I share with you today is based on my personal experience and within the context of one six scale. Um, and what printing. has worked for us? What works for us? So, so you not only need a printer. But you need a model that yes, you want to print. Obviously. And there are three places. Oh, there's more than three, but three that places. He yeah. tends to favor, and the three places are. Uh, the most expensive of the three is a place called turbosquid.com. Mm -hmm. Turbosquid.com. Uh, place I probably frequent the most um, is called cgtrader.com. Um, they just added a feature there, by the way, where you can uh, delimit your search to models that are designed to be printed, okay. 3D printed. Otherwise, you, you know, they could be used for games or, mm -hmm. or, or other 3D animation. And the third and final source, and I think everything on this, this resource is free. It's like sharing type of thing, uh, hopefully legal sharing, but it's called Thingiverse. T H I N G Y. No, T H I N G I. Oh. Verse, I believe. Thingy. Thingy verse. We'll put it in the description. Yeah, whether well, it's thingy with a Y or I. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, it doesn't matter. Even if you spell it wrong, Google's good about finding. Did it. you mean? Da, da, da. Okay. And, so those are three places yeah. where you can get models like a uh, fantasy gun or uh, battle axe. Um, skull, a skull, that sort of thing. Oh, we have gotten models off of Daz 3D, but I don't recommend Daz 3D. Those are not purpose built for for printing. They're more for animation, 3D animation, or just 3D posing, you know, graphics type of thing. So the three model model places mm -hmm. that you frequent are Turbo Squid. Turbo Squid. CG Trader. CG tra Trader and, and Thingiverse. Thingiverse, okay. Yeah. Now, how do you know what's going to work with you know, the printer? Uh, I mean, in terms of models? Mm -hmm. 
You don't until you load it <laughs> into the slicing software. So you need slicing software, yeah. and where do you get slicing software? Uh, the two two big players um, are um, Cheeto Box, which I use, and Lychee, which is has some attractive features that I've been wanting to to uh, to try out. The good good thing about both those companies is that there's a pro version, which is a little pricey, and there's a free version. The free version of that software is very capable. This isn't gutted and watered down. It's it's quite capable. And um, so what this software does is it provides supports yep. around the object or the model that yep. you have. Well, that this you one want printed to make. like this. Yeah. And it's kind of like scaffolding. Yep. And, you know, to 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 build upon. Okay. So so you need you need that software in order to not only uh, you know make it it does in the end make the item. It's not just the model itself. You need no, you, the structural supports to yeah. make the model. So and not it, only the structural supports, but it uh, computates all the algorithms and mm. whatever it does, so that it creates a slice. So. If my hand is the build plate and the vat of resin is down here, it will start here and that build plate will rise up exactly five microns uh, for each layer. Five microns is uh, five one hundredths of a millimeter. So the layers are very thin. You, you can't see the layers, which makes resin ideal for one six uh, action figures until it gets to the end. And then you take it out. So exciting for me to hear all these details. Yeah. But oh, anyway. I, I get off on this stuff. Anyway, so, so startup costs would be about $230 to $240 for a, for fairly, a for fairly good with printer. prices yeah. kind of on um, sale right now right. for a 3D printer. You'll, there are three sources that you can go to to get models. There are two slicing. Uh, Minimum. Uh, Software, software pro programs that you need to provide structural supports to your model. Uh -huh. And then there's resin, right. which isn't... It's not cheap. Isn't, uh, yeah. So, so Having said that it's not cheap, it also, a gallon a will time. last us forever. So he was saying that it's about $200 for a gallon. Yep. But again, it'll last forever. You can make... Tons and tons of weapons yeah. and, and, and so we get forth. our resin from 3D Resin Solutions. So kind of a shout out to them. Um, it is domestically produced, Illinois or Indiana, I can't remember which. Mm. Uh, not imported, domestically and produced. Good customer service. Oh, it's just great customer service. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the last gallon that we bought, um, did I tell you this? We. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we needed it right away because I wasn't paying attention and ran out of resin. So I get two-day shipping. Um, and they didn't do that. And they didn't do two-day shipping. They did five-day, which turned into a week. I said, hey, I, I wrote them back. I said, hey, guys, uh, you know, I paid for two-day shipping. It was a week later. Can you refund me the difference between standard shipping and two-day shipping? And it was like 50, 60 bucks, something like that. Oh, they didn't just refund the difference. They refunded the entire shipping amount mm -hmm. altogether. Just no questions asked. I think, mean, cool. So very good support yep. in terms of the people who make the resin. Absolutely. But you also need um, nitrate gloves when you're working with this material to yep. protect yourself. And if you're in an enclosed space, you probably would need some sort of... Um, Filtration mask. Yeah. Uh, minimum, I would say, the unfortunately, we're all accustomed to uh, buying mask, um, I would get an, at a minimum a N95 uh, mask to filter out the fumes. Some resin is more stinky than others. Uh, early days of us doing this, we bought some resin and it stuck up the whole house and the thing was in the garage. Uh, but this resin that we use, uh, how old almost old. Yeah. Almost odorless. This is how it will come out of yeah. the printer, Which, and then you just paint it black. Yep. So, Which is an additional expense paint. Right. But eventually, you <coughs> will not be spending much to make things like this. Right. Um, and if you do a lot of customizing, in the end, it might be worth it to you 
to yeah, go to this Yeah, and that's a decision you can make. But is we it, don't know what you guys want to hear. I mean, if you would rather just, you know, if we, we heard there was some interest in, in terms of 1911, you know, we could put it up, you know. We do time do, to time. Do um, kind of a lot of 1911s and just sell these on eBay. So, you know, if... If you didn't want to go into this process, we already know the ins and outs, and we can do that for you and just put it on eBay um, if there's enough interest in a particular item. So, yeah, so it, it is a journey, uh, but he loves it, actually, and uh, finding models that actually work sometimes is, can be a, challenge. is a challenge. You're yeah. looking for what kind of files to get? Uh, the standard for... Printing is a .stl okay. file, stereolithography, I think is what it stands for. So STL files. Yeah. And, and, and just because it has a ton of polygons doesn't mean it's perfect. There might be slight imperfections here and there. Yeah, and you like might have to reverse see. polygons and drive you nuts because they won't print. Um, so a little knowledge about modeling would be very handy. Blender or whatever program that you're familiar with would be great because you, you not only have to uh, put the model into some sort of um, a software program like Blender or something like that, but if, but if only to fix some, it or to modify it a lot. Yeah, if, if there's some defects, then you have to fix those. Uh, but so can you just take the model, put it on a little thumb drive, stick it into the printer? No. Do, does you, it you have, have to go to, through Blender? No. For Blender or any other 3D modeling program, that's just there if you need to make modifications to the model. Um, or fix. So you download the model. The right. model is good. Let, let's say it's perfect. The model's you can perfect. Just the model put then it on goes a thumb, into Cheeto thumb Box. Drive. Okay. The model then goes into Cheeto Box. You you the add slicing. the supports. Okay. You you hit uh, the you know slice command and it calculates all the thousands or of different uh, layers that the thing will print at. So uh, you know it'll print. Uh, the UV light will come on for a couple of seconds and then it'll raise up and make another layer, another layer, another layer. So it'll layer. do the computations for exactly. you and, and put in the structural supports that it needs to build the model. Yep. And then once the model is uh, finished printing, then uh, you have to wash it off with rubbing alcohol, correct? Correct. Uh, there's you can buy a dedicated uh, processing station, which I have, and I'm, they're they're great. I mean, they they just start. Or if you're doing this on the cheap, thirty bucks will get you what's called a pickle barrel, and in addition, another within that thirty dollars, you can also buy an inexpensive UV light. So put the alcohol, rubbing alcohol, into the pickle barrel. Put drop the raw, unprocessed model, slosh it around. Get all the resin off as best you can, pull it out, let it dry, and then pull the supports off, and then put it under the UV light to, to cure. Harden it, right. Yeah. And, and there are you'll different need some types. sanding and stuff afterwards. Yeah. And there are different types of resin. Oh, yeah. So you can get um, a, a type of resin where you know the thing is not going to fall and break type of thing. Yeah. Uh, hard resin is good for what it is, but for one six. Uh, scale figures, I like what's called a tough resin. Um, if I were to do this with a hard resin, I'd hear a it, snapping noise. It would but, be but too this brittle. Bends, and I find it just works better for really small scale stuff like this. Mm -hmm. uh, you give up a little bit of detail, but what you gain in flexibility and durability is is well worth it. Really? The details look good to me. Oh, yeah, they're good. I mean, it's, it's, it's subjective. It's good only in comparison to to the other type. There is a kind of resin that is water-soluble. You don't have to use rubbing alcohol. I've never used it before. Um, maybe I'll... Maybe he should. Maybe I'll have a look. Uh, <laughs> because this is messy stuff. This is not a clean process. Uh, resin is toxic. Rubbing alcohol is toxic and flammable. Um, so you're going to be using a lot of paper towels too. Um, you just are sandpaper, um, just stuff you go, Oh wow. I didn't know I needed to do that. Um, 
So yeah. So it's a journey. It's a journey. But if it's a journey that you think is going to save you money in the end, in the long you run, do a lot of customizing, or you want to sell some things on eBay. You know, you're probably not going to get rich off of it. No. We, um, and we intentionally, if we make things for eBay, we will make them uh, in lots and sell them very dirt cheap uh, because, uh, frankly, I, I'm a little tired of waiting for things to come to to me when I well, buy I, things off of eBay. I know. Because they're, they're like coming from overseas. Literally and an ocean away and six weeks later you get it maybe and you don't know if you're going to even get the stuff you yeah, exactly so, yeah, bait so and switch. yeah sometimes that does happen um more likely to happen with certain certain head skulls um yeah so so anyway it's a journey but if it's a journey that is uh worth it to you guys to go through he will uh do some yeah. more yeah, especially setting up, stuff um, stuff. you know, Cheeto box for, you know, adding supports because you just don't hit it. Well, you can hit a button for automatic supports, but the, it won't end well. Trust me on that. Uh, you'll, you'll get failed prints okay. to one degree or another. Are you done? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. So the printer, 230 to 240 resin. $200 a gallon or less if you need You less. don't have to buy a whole gallon. Um, you need um, rubbing alcohol. You need models. You need a uh, You UV need the light. slicing uh, software. Uh, like I said, rubbing alcohol. You need um, nitrate gloves. And, paper towels. And paper towels. And you need a UV light source to harden yep. the material when you're done. Yep. That's bare bones basic. Easy peasy. Bare bones basic stuff. I just tell him what I want and he makes it. <laughs> and being on the other side of the camera is more enjoyable than being here. So, so we'll say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll pause now and then I'll get set up to show you um, something I've been wanting to make um, for some time to add to something I already have. Well, tell us more. Yes, I will as soon as you get out of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll pause now. We won't quit our day job and start up a comedy routine, we promise. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>